Hello, my gallant people. I throw away gallant salute. I say happy new month again. No? This month of September and Uber month go bring us gallant, gallant blessings. <laughs> my people, I know the cool way happened for Gabon. His Excellency Elijah Tiko Abubaka, the Waziri for Damawa, he don't choke mouth for this matter. <laughs> he say make African leaders, make them focus on the disease and not the symptoms. That is to say, you where they get malaria all the time, every time they go treat malaria. You know, look, say, the mosquitoes where they give you those malaria, make you take care of, take care of your surroundings, buy all of them, so that you know, go continue to they get malaria. Hmm. No be small talk, or the thing we ain't talk, so, nine day the screen. He still talk, say, he condemn this act. He no support this act. Say, not democracy in for My people, make one read waiting day the screen, so, I no fear it, because it's Nigeria matter, eh, the thing don't give me so truth. I don't die, yeah. Anyway, I go still collect you now. Watch video for this, um, my video, so, when I go see, there's some correct, correct people don't sit down, analyze this matter, still talk, push for this matter. I beg, when you watch and finish it, you know what you go do for me as you do. Help me share them. Make other people still follow, see, follow here. Say, is Excellency Elijah Atiku Abubaka, he really see the matter at all. My people, more than not forget to follow my page, drop your comments, then go my YouTube channel, NHTV, and go subscribe. I go see you now for another video. When I take care, bye bye. That is, we may need to focus on dealing with the sickness, malaria, and not just fever. Instead of you to go just treat fever, why you no go treat it and cause the fever will be the malaria? That's what he's saying. Mr. Linsing. Yeah, <clears throat> I thank Atiku. So far, he had tried. Because I remember he was the one that shut down uh, Obasanjo's third time bid. It was uh, Atiku Ababaka. And that was where the enmity between uh, Obasanjo and uh, Atiku. Start. In fact, I praise him. I think he tried so much. If not for him, Abbasanjo would have had his way. He tried. Unlike other vice uh, president who cannot even look at their principal in the face, whatever he does. So I praise him. He at least he's, he's walking the talk. He's the Democrat. If you check, he, he's not uh, into all this religious bigotry. He's not. Maybe that's why most people don't uh, they don't they don't like him much in the north. But it doesn't matter. What matters is your conscience and your God. It does, they will come to realize what he's doing for them later. So I praise him for what he has said. But uh, all this reshufflement, my dear, <laughs> do you think it will hold any water? Uh, precious, sir. Will this? They are making a very big mistake. Oh. This is a panic measure. You know when somebody is desperate and uh, in a panic mood, that's what he does. Meanwhile, <laughs> I was thinking they will sack the whole military so that there will, it will only be police and uh, boy scout and uh, man of war to be guarding their country. Is that even possible? No, it, mm, that, uh, to, uh, be, to avoid the military coup. Oh, you sack one military man and replace him with another. Well, did I tell you that here in Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, I mean, but you know, um, yes, they were warning them. The security be, officials are now warning, the, you know, um, they should be loyal. military officers to be loyal. Yes. They, they, they must be loyal. Uh, and that anybody who feels disloyal or who feels that they don't have the need to be loyal I, can I, you know, I, quit the army. I am coming to that. What these people have did, especially these two, you can see despots. That is Rwanda and Cameroon. Yes, these despots. Let me tell you what happened. Paul Kigami was instrumental to what happened in Rwanda. He, he played a very major role. Oh, wow. In the, the genocide. Yes, yes. He was oh, wow. he a prominent role. And when he took over office, everybody was thinking that, well, uh, because of the introduction of some measures, you know, to wipe away the war from the psyche of the average Rwanda. But he is staying put. Is not helping matters and that is why i am worried when the western world are now seeing rwanda as a heaven in africa some uh, immigrants who, who went to britain they were relocated to rwanda where they will get all the privilege they would have gotten in britain i don't know what that means i just don't know how that pan out People run to your country for asylum. You said, no, we cannot keep you in our country, but to come. Come and stay in Rwanda. In Rwanda. Eh, where will be paying you money, but stay there. Mm, you know, they, eh? I mean, I mean, I think, eh? I think, I think, the, you know, that started with the, at the wake of the Ukraine-Russian war. When they had 
I think they were giving you know more of preference to Ukrainian um, um, Ukrainian. Uh, what do they call yeah, them? But it's African. Um, it's African refugees. It's mostly, so so uh, yes. So uh-huh. it's mostly African refugees. Now yes. they said, you know what? Uh-huh. Since our country is too full to harbor uh-huh. you African refugees, and why you people should come and go to this African country, your sister uh-huh. country, to stay? Meanwhile, let's harbor Ukrainian refugees. Now the UNDP, they organize a retreat for our Nigerian governors in the same Rwanda just recently. Hmm. A retreat. In a country of a seat tight president who has been here for 20 years. Look at this Western world, UN, UNDP, you can imagine. Of all the places in Africa, it was that same Rwanda where the man had been in power for 20 years. It does not bother them that that is not the man to have to host such a, an organization. It did not bother them. And our own Nigerian uh, governors. Because they want to be in the good book of uh, UND, they had to go there. Nobody questioned the rationale for going there for such a retreat. To go and learn good governance or whatever. You go and learn good governance from a man who has been sitting tight for 20 years. Look at the contradiction. If I were a governor, I won't go. I won't. They won't even call me. They know. I will tell them ahead of time, don't try it. For what? These are part of the thing that it diminishes. All this reshufflement, precious, quote me, it will not save anything. When the time is come, eh, it will happen. Let me give you an example. Mrs. Indira Gandhi, it was his bodyguard that shot her from the back. Because she was not taking care of the same sex in, you, in, in India. Who were being maltreated and all that. Meanwhile, it was that particular set that was guarding her. The man shot her. Point blank. In Yadema of Togo, when he was becoming too invisible <laughs> and unreachable, the military told his son to go and they do something before they do something to all of them. All. The boy now calculated and calculated and said, Ah, if this would they wipe away our family. All. Of course. He found his way to where his father is. He was the one that killed his father. Biological son. He had the man of Togo. It was his own son that took him out. Eh? So, all this is short for me. You remove a military man, you put another military man. Eh, this other one too. The one that left will tell you what to do. Yes, now. As long as the military man, if they don't like what you are doing, they don't like what you are doing. The only thing is that you have not gotten to the man who will do the job. When the time comes, it will even be somebody that is outside your so-called uh, inner circle. You have not seen stubborn military guys. So, instead of them to do the right thing, they keep reshuffling. Is that not what they were doing here? Remember in Nigeria, every time Buhari will reshuffle uh, military chiefs. Do this. Remove some, post this to the other side. Do this. I said, look at this.